In this video, we're going to do another, feed, another example of a feedback calculation. So first I'll draw an amplifier. All right, so here's our amplifier. Now we need to check the connections at the input and output, and we're going to determine whether those connections are series or shunt. So at the input, we need to go, in, if we put an input in, we would have to go through the amplifier and then through the feedback network to complete the circuit. So we know that this is a series connection. If you look at the output, from the perspective of the output, we know we can go either through the feedback network or through the amplifier to complete the circuit. And so we have a shunt connection at the output. By convention, this is called a series shunt amplifier and this is a voltage amplifier. Now we know it's a voltage amplifier because we're sensing a voltage at the input, which means we want a high, a high impedance, so the series connection increases the impedance. And for a voltage amplifier, we'd like to have a low output impedance. The shunt connection reduces the output impedance. Now when we're solving for the voltage amplifier, we're going to use our hybrid parameters, our H params. All right. So first, let's go ahead and calculate with our hybrid parameters the H11, H22, which are the feedback loading, and then we'll calculate H12, which is beta. So here we have our feedback network, a two-port network with ports 1 and 2 labeled. H11 is equal to V1 over I1 when V2 is short-circuited. So I'm going to short circuit V2 to ground. I'm going to put a test current source in I1, and we're going to measure V1 that develops across port 1. Now, of course, we can easily see that V1 over I1 is equal to RE in parallel with RF. All right. Let's next do H22. H22 is equal to I2 over V2 when I1 is equal to 0. So here we're going to leave port 1 open. We're going to put a test voltage source and we're going to measure the current I2 flowing into the port. Now here we can see that RF and RE are in series. So H22 is equal to 1 divided by RF plus RE. All right, last but not least, we have H12. Now this is going to be equal to beta, our feedback factor. And this is equal to V1 over V2 when I1 is equal to 0, or it's an open circuit. So here we're going to place a test voltage source, V2, and we're going to measure V1 that develops across port 1. We can see that this is a voltage divider. So H12 is equal to RE divided by RE plus RF. All right, now we have our feedback loading determined and our feedback factor determined. So we're going to load the amplifier circuit and calculate the open loop gain. All right, so here's our original amplifier circuit. Now we need to place our feedback loading on it. So I'm going to break the feedback loop and I'm going to add my loading. With this amplifier, I load the input with H11, so this is RF in parallel with RE, and I load the output with 1 over H22, which was RF plus RE. Now let's assume that our amplifier has an input resistance, RI, and an output resistance, RO. 
All right, so let's calculate the forward voltage gain of this amplifier, assuming that it has a gain that's equal to AV times the differential voltage V1 across the two input terminals. I have a voltage division at the input that's equal to RI divided by RI plus RF in parallel with RE. I have the gain of the amplifier, AV, and I have a voltage division at the output as well, which is equal to RF plus RE divided by RO plus RF plus RE. All right, remember we have a voltage at the input and a voltage at the output, so this is our voltage gain. Now, sometimes we label the voltage gain of the amplifier little a sub zero. Okay, now let's assume that this amplifier is a 741. If that's the case, then the input resistance is equal to 2 mega ohms. This is from the data sheet. The output resistance is equal to 50 ohms. And AV is equal to 200 kilovolts per volt. All right. So what we see with the feedback loading uh, is that the feedback loading causes voltage divisions. RF in parallel with RE at the input and RF plus RE at the output. And this tells us that we can't arbitrarily size RF and RE even though the gain of the amplifier in closed loop is solely determined by the ratio of those resistors, if we arbitrarily choose them, we would load the amplifier and cause voltage div divisions. In fact, if RF and RE are too big, the input voltage division would become very significant and would reduce the overall gain. If RF and RE are too small, then the output voltage division becomes significant. Now typically what we look for in the resistors that we use in the feedback network are a few kilo ohms to a few tens of kilo ohms. And if we do this, then it typically means that our voltage divisions won't cause too much impact on the overall gain of the amplifier. Okay, so let's summarize now our performance. The closed loop gain is equal to A naught divided by one plus A naught times beta. And assuming that we haven't impacted A naught by making RF and RE too small or too big, then this is typically approximately equal to 1 over beta. 1 over beta would be equal to RF plus RE divided by RE, or it's approximately equal to 1 plus RF divided by RE. Now this is the expression that we know to be relatively true for our non-inverting configuration of an operational amplifier. So feedback has given us the result that we expect. Now Rn after feedback, because it's series, would be equal to Rn times 1 plus the loop gain. So this would be 2 mega ohms times 1 plus the loop gain. R out after feedback would be equal to R out divided by 1 plus A naught times the loop gain. So in other words, the shunt connection to the output reduces the output impedance of the open loop amplifier by a factor of 1 plus A naught times beta. And our 3 dB bandwidth after feedback is equal to our 3 dB bandwidth before feedback times 1 plus 
glute gain. All right, so that was an example of a series shunt feedback connection, which makes a voltage amplifier. In the next video, we're going to look at a shunt shunt connection.